Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're taking a look at a two-player tug-of-war style card game from Reiner Knizia. This is called Royal Visit. Royal Visit here is a reprint and re-theme of a game from 2006 called Times Square. And in that one, the theme was uh, New York, Times Square. It was a period setting, so 19, I don't know, 40s or 50s or 30s, something like that. And uh, you were trying to do the same thing. It's a, it's a straight reprint. You were trying to have this character come to your nightclub. And if you would manage to do that with some card play, you would win the game. And there was a secondary way to win as well. So this is just, again, a reprint. But they've changed up the theme, we'll talk about that later on at the end of the video, to this, uh, you know, now you've got a jester and a, and a magician, a wizard, and the king is the one visiting the one you were trying to pull into your kingdom. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. I'm going to show you on the table, and I'm going to see you on the other side for some thoughts on this and how I think it compares to the original game. Here we've got the game ready to go with the deck shuffled. Each player has a hand of eight cards from it. The board has been laid out. This is a fabric board, by the way. So there you go. And then the characters set up, as well as this token right here in the center. So we've got two guards out here protecting the king. And then we've got a jester and we've got a wizard. And your objective, the way you win, is by one of three things, okay? Getting the king in your duchy, which is the two pieces, the two spaces closest to you. So one player sitting over here, one over here. Uh, so if you get the king into either one of these, you'll win. If you get this token into your duchy, you win. Or at the end of the game, if neither one of those two things happen, which is when we run through this deck twice, if the king is in your duchy, basically your side of center, then you will win that way. So on your turn, uh, we're going to have this player here has to go first, whoever has the wizard on their side. And this is random, the wizard and the uh, the jester. So this player is going to go first, and on your turn you can play as many cards as you want to, as long as they are all to manipulate, and all the same color, and they manipulate a single figure or figure type. The two uh, guards count as the same. So for example, I could play this card here which moves the uh, wizard two spaces. And so I'm going to go one, two. I want them in my, in my kingdom. Then I'm going to play another one for one, two. And then I might play this last one here for one. There we go. And now I would update this token, but right now nothing's going to happen. And then I'm going to draw three cards. One, two, three, bringing me back up to the total hand size. And then we have this player who's going to go. And again, they are going to play some cards. Now, a couple of rules here to follow. I can move with these cards, I can move the king one step. However, the king can never go outside of the two guards. They must always be around the king, and the king cannot even share space with them like this. So the king could move from here to this space, but then, but then not any closer here unless this guard got out of the way, okay? So that's what this card does. You can also play two of these cards at the same time, to move the trio of characters. So that's what I'll go ahead and do. I'm going to play both of these cards to move this guard once, and the king, and this guard once, all one step towards me. I could even do it again with these two. So there we go. One, one, and again. And now that I'm done playing those, I am going to draw back up. Again, I'll remind you, I could not then also play wizard cards I cannot move guards now on their own with a different kind of card, different colors. Can't do any of that. So I would draw back up, and then the other player is going to go. Uh, I need one more. Four, four, yes. All right, now, I still haven't shown you how this token's going to move, but we're going to do it right now. So this player is going to play cards to move the gesture. We're going to play that one, which is a four. One, two, three, four. We're going to play that one, which is a four, one, two, three, four, and uh, that's going to be it. And now, the final thing we need to do before we draw cards is check whether anyone, any characters in our duchy over here. And if so, for everyone in there, you're going to move this token one step towards you. The other way it happens is if the entire court, meaning the king and the two guards, 
are on your side of the board, on, on you know, in your duchy, basically. And if so, then they also make this token move once for this trio. So again, to recap, if the board looks like this, I just played some cards, and I'm about to draw new ones, I first check if this token moves, and if it looks like this, I'm going to move this token once, twice, and then one point for these. If instead it looked like that, I would move it once, twice, three times for this one being in here, and then one point for these, all being on my side. Obviously an extremely rare situation. So that's how that works. Uh, the other cards you haven't seen yet are the ones for the guards. are going to move the guards one step. They're going to have two steps on them. You can split these up, say one, one, or you can play them towards the same character, say one, two, right? And then the final one for the guards is this kind of card. If you play this kind of card, it'll have a king symbol surrounded by the two guards there. Play that, and the guards immediately rush to protect the king. The king doesn't move, the guards do right around them, all right? So that's a card you can play as well. Now, a couple of final things I need to explain are the special power of the Jester and the Wizard. They have their normal move cards, but they also each have one special ability, okay? So let's say the characters look like this and the Jester is right here. If the Jester is between you and the King, meaning this player right now has access to the Jester's special ability, then you may play Jester cards in order to influence another figure or figure type. Again, the uh, guards basically count as one. And you can move them using your cards. You cannot use, you can use, for example, this four here to move the king towards you. One, two, three, four. And then I cannot in the same turn then play this and move this. One, two, three, four. No, I'm already moving the king. I can continue moving the king if I want to, but uh, you can only move one figure. Another thing is if the king ever then passes the wizard, I'm sorry, the jester, you're done using that special ability. You no longer qualify for the special action, right? So that's one way you can uh, move these characters to your side. And the Jester allows you to use these cards as Jokers. He's a Joker. The cards become Jokers if you qualify. The other special ability for the Wizard, then, is uh, that the Wizard can entice a character, bewitch a character, to come over to the spot, spot that they are in following the usual rules, okay? So you cannot have the king go and come all the way to this wizard because, again, it's breaking the guard's rule, but they could move this guard all the way in here. You cannot, however, do that power on the jester. Jester doesn't fall for that trickery with the, with the wizard, but it's a nice way to go from a situation like this to a situation where, where without playing any cards at all, you go, um, this is now here. And I'm going to pull this thing one, two, over here on my turn. All right. So there you go. That's it. Again, the way to win is by doing this and having the king land in there by moving this all the way in here. Or once you go through the deck, we flip over this token. And once you go through it again, wherever the king is, whatever duchy it ends up in, that player is going to win once this deck is gone twice. And that's going to do it for us. So let's go back up top. Let me give you some final thoughts. That is Royal Visit. Uh, I have to say, I uh, think this is uh, overall, I, I like this better than the original one. Now, it's been many years since I played that one, too. I could have simply changed my opinion of what I thought of the original one. But I think this is just a better fit overall. Let's talk about it. We're going to start with one of those changes, which I think is very positive, the theme. The theme here fits a lot more elegantly than it did in the original game. The original game, the the trappings, the setting, were uh, harder to translate to a teachable game. There was just not a whole lot of sensical sort of one-to-one -one relation as to why Handsome Hal and Saucy Sue would allow you to move, you know, this character towards you, and uh, this one was able to pull one all the way across the board, that sort of thing. It just didn't make sense. In this one, the Joker can make cards be wild. They are Jokers, and the Wizard has magic powers and can attract somebody to their side. So that works very well. I'm glad about uh, that change. I think it's a good one. 
the aesthetics here are for the most part very very nice nice artwork it's got this great uh, look on on every piece of the uh of the uh, entire package the board i think is a neat idea i think um i don't understand thematically why they went with a cloth board doesn't really i like i don't understand how that ties into the whole thing why they couldn't just do a, a double fold out board and sometimes it doesn't want to lay as flat as i wanted to okay that's my my main issue with the packaging here with the design style they went with also if you're someone who likes to sleeve your cards you're gonna have to get rid of this insert i think i don't think it's gonna fit back in there okay here's what the game put away looks like and it's just you know they're, they're not gonna fit back in they might not they might not fit in that space either so just be aware of that i like that the board rolls up in here that's fine but again it's real it's very thin, so it might not lay super flat. These pieces are insanely good. They are printed on there, so it's not a sticker. They're incredibly chunky. They're fantastic. Really good pieces. And then I like this touch of having this piece flip over when the game is halfway through, when you've run out the deck. A visual reminder of that. The original Times Square didn't have that. It's a minor thing, but I appreciate it. So, again, the aesthetics are, for the most part, good. Good card quality, too. Replay value is good. This is a, an interesting two-player card game because it's uh, one that's very easy to understand right away and then it, it it blossoms as you play a few more times and you start to see the, the nuances in, in what you should do when you can take a turn that is really more of a reinforcement turn to beef up your hand for a big swing when you can uh, let your opponent get away with something for a while while you while you sneakily do something else. I like that. So I think the replayability here is good. It will evolve as you play. You will discover subtle new things. And the game is fairly subtle, though the the motions, the movements in it can be it can be wild and swingy and splashy. Like I'm moving this character all the way over here, boom, because I'm playing these five cards. But there's also a lot of subtlety in there. Uh, the game mark is the one thing where I think the tension isn't always reliable in this game. Sometimes you do just get caught in this, uh, you know, tit for tat, like I pull this person over here while I'm pulling them back with these cards. And we sort of do that back and forth a few times and then somebody just doesn't have the cards to respond so they go off and do something else and maybe you counter that thing. If the game goes to the conclusion in which you go through the deck twice, the tension, that fear of, oh, my opponent's almost got that king token all the way in there, it doesn't isn't uh, there sometimes. So you can have fantastic games of this, very tension-filled, very much uh, you know going for the throat, and they feel immediately suspenseful, and sometimes it doesn't really pan out that way. It isn't as reliable from that point of view as I would like it to be, okay? The ease of play is... Very good for the most part. I kind of wish they would have included a player aid or two. I mean, it's two more cards. It could have done that. To, uh, mainly for the reminders to how the Jester and the Wizard work. It is on the back here. So they have that. But the, the back here, what it shows you is the reminders for the Jester says, for example, what the cards do. And for the Wizard, the numbers of the cards. Then down here, you've got the powers of the Wizard and the Jester. And then the crown token down here, how it moves uh, towards you. That's good. I'm glad that they're not wasting the back of the rule book. That's nice. A little above and beyond would have been to give the players a card with some of this information on it. But again, it's not a big deal. I'm not giving this a negative at all. I think the player uh, ease is high. This is a, an easy game to understand and play and internalize. Lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. I think it's a good balance of all of those things. There's certainly luck. You're pulling cards from the top of the deck. You are refilling your hand entirely every time, so that's good. You can burn some cards away to try to draw a whole bunch of them up and hopefully make uh, larger sets. Uh, but there are also plenty of tactics responding to what your opponent is doing, putting out, again, what the, the fires they're, tar they're, they're trying to set, putting those out, and then also whatever way you are trying to win. What do you, you know, what do you put on your side of the board that hopefully makes your opponent have to react to you? How do you attack? You know, how do you set in your plan uh, in motion? So I like all of those things. This is not one for people who don't like luck, but I think it's got the luck that's in there adds to the 
the feel of the entire package. It's a short game too, about 20 minutes or so. That's what it says on the box, and that's about right. So there you go. The original game, I looked on Board Game Geek as to what I had it rated. It's been many years since I changed it, but I had it at a six. This one's better. It's it's brighter, it's prettier, makes more sense, much more table presence. So I like this one more. I'm glad this is back. I'm happy with it. I've enjoyed my plays of it. By the way, with all of my plays, the game ended. I've seen all three endings since I've played this. It's not like one of them doesn't really happen. I like that a lot too. So this is going to get a 7 out of 10 from me. I recommend it. If you're looking for a card game that is uh, just a little bit different of a tug of war style game and you don't, you know, you're not sick of that style, then this is a good one. Uh, Royal Visit is uh, fun, engaging, and I think you're going to have a good time with this little world for two players. 7 out of 10, that is a seal of approval from me. And that's going to be it, everybody. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.